Hey everybody, this is Matt and we're at Texas Toast Guitars. Thanks for watching. I got my Sully shirt on today um, and I, I thought that was a good shirt to wear. Uh, so John, I know you're not watching, but if you are, how you doing, man? Um, so today I want to talk to you guys about, uh, I got something in the mail I got from Infinity Tools. So I want to tell you a little story. Um, my friend Matthew Miller sent me this tool and uh, he, he sent me an email and he's like, hey, have you ever tried these, uh, what are they called? These are the Infinity Mega, Mega Flush Trim Bit. And uh, I'm like, well, no, I haven't. And he uh, was kind enough to send me one. Now, so full disclosure, I did not pay for this. Um, and I did, I asked Matthew, do you work for Infinity Tools? He said, no, he's not affiliated. He just likes them. So, um, I thought, well, that's very kind of you. That Thank you very much. So uh, it came in the other day, and this looks really cool. So this is a half-inch shank with a three-quarter inch cutting head, and it's got um, uh, carbide cutters on it, both in the up and down orientation, and um, it's got a bearing on the top and bottom. So that is pretty neat. So I thought what I would do is... Um, chuck this up in my router, on my router table, and see how it works for cutting out a neck um, using a template. So let me put this in the router and let's try it out. So normally I leave this spiral cut, uh, down cut bit in the router all the time, and I just switch routers and it goes right in my router table because uh, this style of bit or this style of bit is one that we use almost all the time. So having another router saves a little bit of time. All right, let's give this guy a whirl here. All right, that looks pretty good. Um, now the website says that the maximum speed for this router bit is uh, 1800. RPM, so we're going to adjust. We're going to adjust that here. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we will load it into the router table. Well. Well, that looks pretty good. Let's um, let's uh, check out the piece we're going to route and give it a try. There's probably two things that get routed on a router table with a pattern bit over and over and over again, and that's guitar body outlines and guitar neck outlines. So I have a neck that's ready to go. Um, it's this piece of maple right here, and we are going to duplicate one of our daily driver necks with it. Now, normally, I would do this on my Shaper, which has a three-inch cutting head and runs at 10,000 RPM and gives excellent, excellent results. But I know that not everybody has a shaper, so I think that this little, uh, this new bit here that we have, because it's three quarters of an inch, it's gonna, uh, it should yield a little bit uh, less risk for chip out on some of these areas. <clears throat> but I've gone ahead and I've cut real, real close to the line there. Um, you know, you don't want to have a bunch left over. What the shaper will take out and what a router will take out are two very different things. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and attach the template. Let's, let's give it a shot. I'm looking forward to seeing what we come up with here. All right, I know that there's an ongoing feud between me and, uh, and everyone who uses masking tape and super glue um, as to which is the superior method for attaching templates to the workpiece. But the fact of the matter is that if given a chance, I would... I would rather use screws every time um, because I think that, that that method is always stronger than any kind of tape. So I attach my screws here to the through the through the template and into the piece, and my truss rod channel will make those holes go away um, down the line. Okay, so it looks like we need to adjust adjust our cutter just a little bit here. Um, I kind of think, I kind of think it would be cool to, to run this. Maybe we can run it on the, riding on the top of the bearing 
for part and on the bottom of the bearing for part. In fact, let's do, uh, let's do half with the, uh, the bearing running on the top. We'll go from like right, right here to say right here, and then we'll, uh, we'll switch and, uh, and go the other way maybe. Um, I don't know, let's see. Well, that looks pretty good. Um, in fact, I really like it. I didn't know what was going to happen when we got to this, this end grain here. Usually, um, you kind of got to steer clear of this corner because you wrap around and uh, it wants to chip out all of, eh, let me get this in the camera, all of this material here because there's very little support. But this guy glided right through. No, uh, no big shake. Um, everything on this side looks, looks really good. I'm going to raise it up and let's see if we can't, um, can't go off the bottom bearing and see, I can't imagine it's going to be any different, but let's just try it. So people don't go, Hey, what happens when you use the bottom bearing? And I have to go, I don't know. It's a lot of bit exposed. I'm just going to do this for a little bit. Give that a test there. Yeah, this seems kind of dumb just for the sake of doing it, but but let's um hmm let's see what happens. People are gonna go, Matt, that's stupid, and I'm gonna have to go. Yeah, you're right, but I just wanted to know, so let's try. It. Well, that certainly works, but it's still a little spooky. I, I don't like having that much bit exposed. Um, that's just me. If you guys are tougher than me, I, I, uh, um, I'll take your word for it. But yeah, I, I would really rather have less bit exposed and uh, use, the, use the template on the top. But it did work just fine, and so that's cool. Let's, um, let's finish up this headstock here and, uh, and see how she looks. Forgot to turn my dust collection on. Well, that looks pretty good, you guys. Not, uh, not really any tear out to speak of. And of course, it's a brand new bit, so it's nice and sharp. But I think this is a this is a pretty neat little router bit. Um, so before I pull the template off, I'm going to drill these holes because they're already here. So why not? Let's do that now. Remember when I told you guys I drill this with the template on? I actually don't, but I do uh, put a little mark with my brad point um, with the template on. The, the, the reason I don't go all the way through with the template is the template can kind of shake and wallow around a little bit. And I really just want to get my, um, my hole started and, um, uh, and then come back without the template. That way I don't, I don't dork up my template too. So um, yeah, that looks pretty good. Okay guys, uh, this looks really pretty good. I'm very pleased with the results. Um, I, when, I, when I started this video, I was really just gonna kind of intending to just talk about this router bit. Um, and then I thought, you know, this is an opportunity to do a video where I don't get accused of being a shill as much if we made it kind of a video about making a neck um, uh, with your router table. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about what if you, you know, what if you don't have this bit or what if you don't trust this bit or for whatever reason you you have had bad luck with routers and you want to you want to steer clear from them as much as you can to avoid tear out and things. If it was me, I would do the sides of the neck on the router table and then I would switch if, if again, if you don't feel like the router bit's going to do it, 
whether it's this one or one of yours that you have. This area here, I would go ahead and, and sand. Um, this area here, I would go ahead and use an abrasive tool sander as well. Um, because like this spot here, we're coming around with the router, this is where you'll get a bunch of tear out and you can, uh, uh, you can eliminate that by not using a cutting tool, but using an abrasive tool, like a sander. Um, cut real close to the line too, and that way you're not taking off a bunch of material, whether you're sanding or cutting with the router bit, and that will save you a boatload of work too. So um, anyway, thanks again to Matthew Miller for sending me this bit. Uh, guys, remember I did not pay for this, and Matthew does not work for Infinity Tools, but seems like a good tool so far. If you have any questions about what uh, we did in this video, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me the thumbs down and tell me why in the comments. I'm always a little curious why I always get some thumbs down. I'm pretty sure it's people that just don't like me and want to watch Ben Crow's videos, which Ben is a great luthier. <laughs> Go watch his videos. Um, uh, you'll learn a lot from him. If you appreciate content like this, you might want to go over to our Patreon page and consider becoming a member. Even a buck a month goes a long way to helping us bring you guys neat stuff like this. We try to do stuff at least once a week, um, in addition to all the other live videos that we do. If you can't do Patreon, though, we totally understand. Just share the video as many places as you can think of and help us grow the channel that way. So until next time, guys, this is Matt at Texas Toast reminding you that if you're so smart, start your own YouTube channel. That's what I did. Thanks for watching, you guys. Take care.